Calling All Authors, the Your Book, Your Voice podcast with host Robert A. Lane features everything you need to know about narrating your audio book, but it doesn't stop there. We have special guests lined up from all aspects of the book publishing industry, and we also dive deep into what it takes to be mentally prepared for success as an author and in life. So please welcome your host, Robert A. Lane. Hey, my friends, how are you? I hope uh, you're having a great week so far. Uh, This is Your Book, Your Voice. Glad you're joining the podcast. I am Robert A. Lane. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network and have another great show for you, so I'm glad you're here. Um, Quick intro about who I am and what I do, in case this is the first time you've tuned into the podcast. Uh, I am an audiobook coach and producer, and I specialize in helping uh, nonfiction authors like yourself narrate your own audiobook taking that great published book that you have and turning into it you know, turning it into an audiobook that you narrate in your own voice you do the narration not ai not another narrator you do the narration and uh, i help you as an author set up your recording space teach you the fine art of audiobook narration how to do voiceover how to be Uh, engaging and compelling and conversational and keeping your listener on the edge of their seat from opening credits to closing credits. And as part of the uh, audiobook coaching program that I teach, uh, I do all the audio editing for you. I provide the professional equipment that you need to set up your recording space. I do send you professional equipment that you get to keep forever. And uh, I do the editing, make sure your uh, audiobook sounds fantastic and meets the exact specifications for publication. And then I upload your audiobook for you into Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. I call that the AAA. You got to be on those three distribution platforms and get you published by the end of the six week program. Uh, the course is called your book your voice and it is an audiobook coaching program that i teach and that's what you do as an author turning your book into an audiobook if you are interested i'd love to talk with you uh there is a a link that you can um schedule a call with me because i'd love to be able to talk to you about your book Uh, we'll throw on that graphic in just a second uh, so you can see uh, the link there take a screen grab of that okay (laughs) take a screen grab and uh, book a call with me because i would love to talk with you we'll discuss your book and i'll give you more details about the your book your voice audiobook coaching program and uh, get you enrolled and you can have your audiobook ready to go for publication in six weeks Not six months, not three months, not 10 years, in six weeks. And that's a pretty awesome thing for you as an author. Uh, Great time to do it is anytime, right? Anytime. You can always launch your book. So schedule a call with me. That's my personal calendar link. And you will talk with me directly and we'll get you enrolled into the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. Uh, One more thing that I do want to share with you is that I do have a freebie that I give away. And that is an audiobook narration reference guide. There's another link there uh, on the screen. Take a screen grab of that if you would like. And uh, you can uh, download this free PDF, which uh, is a great reference. teaching you how and showing you how some of the uh, practical and uh, uh, intangible things like emotion and energy and those kind of things, as well as uh, the practical techniques of doing a great audiobook narration. Uh, it's a free guide. Download it. Uh, it's, there's, it's there for you. Uh, we'll put the graphic up uh, later on in the show as well. Uh, also, I will um, announce the, um, the link because <laughs> I realized that uh, uh, even though we do uh, this live stream on the Bold Brave TV network on their YouTube channel and on other uh, podcast platforms, uh, but some of those platforms are audio only. So uh, I'll uh, go through the links as well a little bit later on. Okay, so what I do want to jump into is our topic for today. And uh, the topic is who cares what other people think? Who cares what other people think? Now, Interesting topic for an audiobook coach, right? But it does make sense. And it is really, really important because you as an author 
you care what other people think, right? You, you wrote your book. You want people to love your book and you want people to enjoy your book. You want, you, you do care because, uh, you know, you put your heart and soul into this awesome nonfiction book that you published and you want people to enjoy it and to embrace uh, the story that you're telling, or maybe you're a coach or an entrepreneur and you're talking about your coaching program and, uh, you know, you want people to enjoy your book. Well, of course you care what other people think. Now, that's really not the path that I want to take you on today because I want to talk about the mindset aspect and being in the right frame of mind when you as an author are writing your book and especially when you are narrating your audiobook. It's not who cares what other people think. It's if you're allowing what you, you think other people think of you, and this is really important, especially when it comes to narration, right? And when it comes to audiobook narration, if you care what other people think about how you sound, you shouldn't be thinking about it in that fashion, all right? Who cares what other people think about your voice? Because honestly, it's not what you sound like that people care about. It's the content that you're providing. It's how you are telling your story in your audiobook. That's what people care about. That's what people are drawn to. It doesn't matter if, uh, you know, maybe you're from uh, the South and you have a, a Southern accent. That, that actually uh, can benefit you because it's part of your style and personality and that's what makes you, you. Uh, the other day I was talking to an author who lives in New York. Uh, she has a book that she's looking to turn into an audiobook. And she has this lovely UK accent. It's great. I think she will sound fantastic when she does her audiobook. So people don't really care about what you sound like. They really care about the content. What do you have to say? What is the story that you're telling? Why do you want them to listen to your audiobook? It's content. All right. So just keep that in mind. And I do want to share a story with you. Um, it's not author uh, book related in a sense. Well, actually, you know what? It kind of is. It kind of is because uh, it's a story that is in my book, which is called Lights Action You. Uh, and again, being an author, uh, and I think I have a graphic too that I can put up if you wanted to uh, order this book and buy this book in book form, of course, but get the audiobook because, you know, I narrate my own audiobook as the author, just like you as an author, I want you to narrate your own audiobook. Uh, but uh, you can go to Amazon and, of course, pick up the book. But there's a story in here that I want to share with you, which is directly uh, tied into. Um, our topic for today. In other words, uh, so who cares what other people think? All right, so the story that I share, actually the book is about um, uh, life coaching and career coaching and how to navigate through uh, your work environment and also some tools and techniques in the book uh, when I wrote the book that will just help you in general on how to really uh, achieve work-life balance and, and remove stress and all those great things that you need to do <laughs> to survive in any work environment. But uh, there's a story that I tell. Uh, this is when I was working in the uh, entertainment industry. Uh, I worked 30 plus years in the entertainment business. Uh, this book actually, uh, I've pulled uh, various stories and experiences and put them in this book. And with those stories, you know, I share uh, some uh, thoughts and lessons on what I learned through those experiences and share some of my uh, uh, life coaching and career coaching aspects. But there's a story in there that I share and it's, it's a, the chapter's called Double Bag It. And there's a reason for that. Um, and basically the story is uh, when I was working at Fox Studios, uh, I worked on the studio lot in Los Angeles and uh, on the studio lot is uh, a gym, which is great, very convenient. You can go to the gym, work out uh, you know, early in the morning or at lunchtime or after work. It's right there on the studio lot. It's great. So I would do my workouts in the morning before I would start my day. And where I worked at the building that I worked in, was about a 10 minute walk from where I was in my building all the way over to the other side of the lot where the uh, uh, gym was. Now, this is where the uh, double bag it <laughs> title comes in. My gym bag was a double bagged brown paper bag. Uh, that was my gym bag. It was a great gym bag. I loved that gym bag. I would stack my clothes in in a certain order. It worked great for me, worked really, really well. 
Uh, now, my coworkers would tease me about my gym bag. They're like, come on, Robert, get a real gym bag. You know, what's this brown paper bag thing? But you know what? I love my double bagged brown paper bag. It was a great gym bag. And, uh, you know, it's like, hey, it works for me. It's great. I, I'm, I'm happy with it. But you know what? When people say things to you, and this is where uh, the who cares what other people think come in, comes into play. When people do say things to you or other people say things to you, sometimes it does have an effect. Uh, so I'd walk across the lot, I'd go to the gym, go into the locker room and I'm changing. And even some people in the locker room were kind of teasing me about my double bagged brown paper bag. They're like, come on, that's your gym bag? I'm like, yeah, it's a great gym bag. Come on, it's great. But sometimes I would feel well, self-conscious walking that 10 minute walk over to the gym, carrying this double bag brown paper bag as my gym bag. And I would, you know, be like, I'm kind of embarrassed a little bit, but I would stop myself. And this is what I would say. First, who cares what other people think? Okay. Now I say that not in a mean or vindictive way. I say it in, as a matter of fact, just stating a fact. And this is how you should look at it, especially as an author. And if you're going to narrate your own audiobook and you're concerned about your voice, think of it this way. Who cares what other people think? Honestly, it doesn't matter. And I would follow that up with one of my catchphrases. And this is where the catchphrase came from. I would tell myself this. I would just stop for a moment and I would say to myself, I am who I am. I do what I do. And I am not ashamed of it. And that is all I needed to say. That's it. And that gave me the confidence to walk proud with my <laughs> brown paper bag, that was my gym bag, across the studio lot, over to the gym, and do my thing. Now, here's the funny thing. As time went on, my coworkers would start bringing me brown paper bags, and they would tease me, you know, jokingly, and say, hey, Robert, look, I have another gym bag for you. And they hand me a brown paper bag. And I'd laugh, you know, and I'm like, ha ha, great, you know, because I would use it. So it was funny that they, in a sense, started to just embrace my little quirky double brown or double bagged <laughs> brown paper bag as my gym bag. And also, when I would go to the gym, some, some of the guys in the locker room were like, you know what, that's really not such a bad idea. And it really wasn't a bad idea if you think about it. You know, some people pay a lot of money for a fancy gym bag. You know, some people pay 50, 100, $200, I don't know, just a lot of money for a gym bag. After a while, it's going to wear out. And, you know, no matter how much you wash it and clean it and try to get that gym <laughs> dirty clothes smell out of your bag, hey, you know what? It's not going to get out of there. The beauty about the double bag brown paper bag gym bag that I had was great because when it you know, got worn out, you just put it in recycling and then grab a couple more paper bags, brown paper bags. There you go. New gym bag. And guess what? I'm not paying a hundred bucks for a gym bag every single time I need to replace a bag. You know, it was free. So it is actually a pretty uh, brilliant idea. If you think about it, you get to recycle the bag and you know what? Who cares what other people think? Who cares what other people think? I am who I am, I do what I do, and I'm not ashamed of it. And you know what? Again, people in the gym were like, hey, that, that's, that's a pretty smart idea. And uh, my coworkers just accepted it for, for what it was. But I just wanted to share that story with you because that's a catchphrase maybe that, that you wanna think about, even as an author, right? You are who you are, you do what you do, and you are not ashamed of it. You know, you are a great nonfiction author. You're writing this great book. You are a great narrator. You can narrate your own audiobook. Who cares what other people think? Now I'm gonna dive into um, more details about this whole concept. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, but uh, I do want to, to get into that. Uh, one of the things, one of the questions that I wanna ask now and give you some time to think about during the break is do you allow others to influence your business decisions. 
Think about that, all right? We're gonna talk more about that. I have some more uh, nuggets I wanna share with you. This is your book, Your Voice. I am Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. We're gonna take that quick break. Think about that question. Do you allow others to influence your business decisions as an author? Think about that. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. All right, welcome back to Your Book, Your Voice. I'm your host, Robert A. Lane. Uh, with Robert Lane Coaching. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. I do appreciate you hanging out. Uh, if you have any comments and you would like to uh, ask a question, uh, please do so. Uh, I'll try to answer them as we go along. Uh, if I can get to it, I will, uh, but I uh, love your participation as well. Um, also, uh, I am an audiobook coach and producer. I do have a, a, a coaching program that I, I take my uh, clients, which are nonfiction authors, uh, teaching them how to do their own narration and get their book turned into an audiobook that they narrate themselves. If you want more information about that, um, by all means, please book a call. That's how it all starts. Um, I want you to... Uh, talk to me first, and I want to talk to you first as well, uh, because I want to uh, develop a business relationship for you. Now, those of you who uh, may not be seeing the video uh, podcast and are only hearing the audio podcast version, uh, I will spell out the link to book a call. This is my uh, personal link. It's bit.ly, so it's B-I-T dot L-Y forward, uh, forward slash audiobook onboarding, all right, bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboard, onboarding. Don't forget the uh, bit.ly forward slash and then just type in audiobook onboarding after that. You're good to go. All right, so let's get back into our topic of who cares what other people think. And the question that I asked was, do you allow others to influence you with your business decisions, especially as an author? Do you allow others? Like, uh, you know, there's, I can't even tell you how many times that I've talked to other authors, you know, friends of mine and just clients that I've worked with who uh, you know, say, you know, I hear this all the time. You should write your book this way or uh, you need to do this. You need to do that. You have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. You know, uh, and especially when it comes to audiobook narration, you have to have a you have to have a professional narrator. And that's not true. But if you are allowing other people to influence you. Then you're not in charge of your own business because you are an author, okay? Your authorship is your business. This is your brand. You are an author brand. Your published nonfiction book is your product. You have this great product that is out there, 
all right? This is your brand, this is your product. You are the CEO of you. Another one of my catchphrases I love saying all the time, and it's true, you are the CEO of you. The buck stops here. When it comes to running your business as an author, making decisions as an author, and just as a business person, you are the CEO of you. You are in charge of the decisions that you make. Now, if you are looking for advice, if you are looking for constructive criticisms when you're writing your book, uh, then that's one thing, okay? Getting feedback from other people that you are asking for is one thing. But if you're allowing other people who uh, tell you what to do, or if you see, uh, you know, if you're on social media and you see a bunch of things and all these people are doing it this way or they're doing it that way or they follow this influencer or that influencer, it doesn't necessarily mean that what they're doing is the best thing for you with your business as an author. You have to make the decisions. You have to make the choices and do what's best for you as an author, as your author brand, as your business. And it's, again, especially true when you are narrating your own audiobook. Again, I'm a big advocate. This is why I do what I do as an audiobook coach and producer is really encourage nonfiction authors to narrate their own book, not get another uh, narrator. And there are great narrators out there. Believe me, I, I have uh, some awesome uh, narrator voiceover friends who, who are just incredible. But when it comes to a nonfiction book, I'm a big proponent of having you as the author narrate your own book. It's your story. You're the author. This is a nonfiction book, okay? This is the story that you're sharing. You lived it, you breathed it, you've birthed this book and you put it out there. It is so important to you that you wrote this book and you published it and you put it out there in the world for people to read. And hopefully you will narrate your own book so that people can hear you as the author tell your story, speak your story in your own voice. Only you can tell your story the way that you intend it to be heard. Only you can do that. Other narrators are fantastic. Professional narrators, if you're gonna, you know, if someone has a, uh, an audiobook that they're doing or if someone is doing something and they wanna hire a professional narrator, you gotta go pro, okay? You gotta go pro. But again, if you hire a professional narrator as a nonfiction author, they are still going to interpret your book their way. They're gonna narrate it in their style. And that can take away from what you're trying to get across in your book. Now remember, when you wrote your book, your voice is in the written word, how you express yourself, that's in there. And when people read your book, you know, they have this imaginary voice in their head that they're hearing. I do, and I know a lot of people do. When you're reading, you, you just, it's kind of like you're reading and reading and reading and you hear this voice. Why not, it, why not have it your voice? Let it be your voice telling the story. And it's a great way to, again, solidify your author brand, right? You're preserving the integrity of your book. When you are narrating your own audiobook, you're preserving the integrity of your book, your style, your pacing, your emotion, your feelings, your purpose, the reason why you wrote your book in the first place, right? You're bringing that energy, you're bringing that to the table when you're doing your audiobook narration. So when it comes to things that influence you or that you allow them to influence you, think about that for a second. And then ask yourself, is this, is, is this influence, this external influence that may be pushing or pulling me in a direction, do I want to go in that direction or do I not want to go in that direction? Is that uh, influence moving my business forward? Is it helping me as an author? Is it making me uh, write a better book? If I want to narrate my own audiobook, I'm going to do it. And that's what you say, should say to yourself. You can do it. You can do it. And don't worry about your voice. I know I mentioned that earlier uh, in the first segment. Don't worry about how you sound. It's not how you sound, it's what you have to say that's so important. Again, people are not worried about what you sound like. 
So when I say, who cares what other people think? Really, it's who cares how you are thinking about your own voice? Now, I mean, obviously you should care. You, you, know, you, you care because you want to do a great audiobook narration, right? But if you are worried about how you sound, you shouldn't be. I would say 90 plus percent of the authors that have gone through my audiobook coaching program have had some confidence is issues about how they sound and are worried or concerned, or maybe there's some fear, or maybe there's something that uh, is uh, creating a barrier for them to uh, be worried about how they sound or doing a great narration. We talk about these things because, you know, the mindset aspect of being an author is really important. And there's a lot of information out there on how to write a book. You know, the, the practical aspects of, of writing a book, the practical aspects of doing an audiobook narration, but the intangibles, the emotion, the feeling, the mindset, being in the right frame of mind, those are things that uh, sometimes get swept under the carpet. Now, people don't want to talk about. You do need to make sure that you are in the right frame of mind because that is so important. When you do your audiobook narration, you know that, you know that feeling you have when you're writing your book? You know that purpose that was driving you? The core reason of why you wrote your book in the first place? All that, again, is what you bring to the table when you do your narration. Because that energy, that excitement, that purpose, that feeling, that worth, everything comes through in your voice. Some of it is very subtle. You may not even notice it, but you know what? The listener will. And maybe they may not understand why they're so engaged with your book when they listen to your audiobook, but that's why, because it's that intangible. It's those things, those things that you can't physically touch. All right. Maybe you can't grab that emotion, but I'll tell you, you can feel it. You can feel it inside. And that's, what's so important. So remember outside influences should not be a factor when it comes to making decisions about what you do as an author in your business unless you're seeking criticism or constructive criticism or feedback. Uh, and, and again, getting feedback is good too. I'm part of, uh, you know, I, I, have, I have coaches. I have a couple of coaches that I work with for various aspects of my business. I have a, a group of uh, uh, other business people. Some uh, are authors, some are in the book industry and then some aren't. But we get together and talk about uh, it's like my mastermind group, right? We have a mastermind group that we meet and we talk about and share thoughts and ideas and give feedback to each other. That's very productive. And that's something that, uh, you know, I think that if you have an opportunity to be able to do that, to work with people, to uh, uh, have a group, a core group of, of professionals that are successful, even people who are just way more successful than you are, that's okay because you're going to learn from them. And that's why these, these, you know, mastermind groups, if you can, even if you um, get a bunch of people together, right? If you know other professionals, create, create one, create a group. And that's where you get constructive criticisms and great feedback for your business. Okay. But remember, you are the CEO of you. The buck stops here. So when you're making decisions about your business as an author, Make sure you're making the right decisions and make sure you're making decisions that, that are moving your business forward and that are good for you, that are preserving your authenticity and just uh, your business in general. Remember, because you as an author, you're a brand. You are a brand and your book is a product. And the great thing about turning your, your uh, nonfiction book into an audiobook is that you are creating another format another piece of the product that you are offering to the world. Because so many people now, 83% uh, of the population listens to audiobooks. Yours needs to be there too. And the other, uh, per oh, shoot, I don't remember the percentage of it, but more people are listening to audiobooks now. Uh, in other words, they are asking and seeking out audiobooks first before they get the ebook or paperback or hardcover because people like to listen to the audiobook. I love it. 
I love it when I hear an author narrate their own their, their own audiobook. It, it's 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 great, you know, to hear their story, telling their story. And you know, again, this is why you as an author really need to narrate your own book because you are the only one who can interpret it the way you want it to be heard. And that is just a, such an important fact. And the other thing is you are preserving your author brand. Like I mentioned earlier, your voice is in your written word. Now your voice is being heard, right? There's another catchphrase. I got to remember that. Your voice is in the written word. Now your voice is being heard. I hope I remember that. I'm going to have to go back to the replay <laughs> and write that one down. <laughs> but uh, anyway, if you do have any questions about the audiobook world or if you are an author or, you know, again, uh, go to the comments, jot them down. You can always get in touch with me at robertlanecoaching.com. Uh, and you can even uh, shoot me an email if you want at robert at robertlanecoaching.com. Uh, and I'd be happy to talk with you as well. Um, but anyway, you are the CEO of you. Make sure the decisions that you are making for your business are great. And the other thing that I want to mention is you cannot, under any circumstances, cut corners. Okay? You put all the time and energy to create your book. When I, you know, and I'm with you, I've done it. I've experienced doing this. I'm a self-published author and I went through all the proper channels, getting a proper editor and a proofreader and formatter, cover designer, everything that I needed to put out something 100% top-notch professional. That same professionalism has to be with your audiobook. Okay, I want to talk a little bit more about the professional aspect of that. Uh, we're going to take a, another quick break, but I do want to talk about the reason why you have to do everything top notch all the way through from beginning to end. Because remember, this is your author brand. All right. So with that, we're going to take uh, again another quick break. Uh, you are listening to your book, your voice. I do appreciate you hanging out on this podcast. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We're streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Thank you for being here. We're going to talk more. Oh, I got some really good stuff in this next segment, so definitely don't go away. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429 energetic magic on the bbm global network tuesdays at 7 p.m eastern find your greater happiness be well be aware be magical are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work life and caregiving has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. And welcome back to the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. Streaming live here on the Bold Brave TV network. Uh, just wanted to continue a thought uh, before we took a break about professionalism. Now you put your heart and soul into the book that you've published. You need to do the same when you do your audiobook. You got to not cut corners because when you cut corners doing your audiobook, you're cheapening your brand as an author. If you're putting subpar product out there, you are actually lessening. 
uh, the expertise of you as the author and of the space that you are um, talking about. So, you know, maybe you are a life coach or a career coach, or maybe you talk about relationships or, uh, you know, toxic work environments or, uh, you know, financials, whatever your book is about. If you have an audio book that's subpar, why are people going to uh, trust you and think that you're the expert? Because they're, they're going to be like, well, you know, this book, you know, the book looks great, but man, this audiobook is just not happening. You don't want to cheapen your brand as an author. And that is something that is so important. You got to preserve, as I say, the integrity of your author brand. Okay. You got to preserve the integrity of your brand. So do not ever cut corners. Um, and again, when it comes to narrating your own audiobook, do it yourself as the author, because only you can tell your story the way you intend it to be heard. Again, another narrator, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is going to do their interpretation, which may not be exactly the way you would say it. So you should say it. <laughs> you should say it. And again, don't go the AI route. That's cutting corners. That's cheapening your brand, cheapening your product, and cheapening yourself as an author brand. You don't want to do that. AI is not going to replicate what you wanted to say in your book. Remember, your voice is in your written word. There's no way that AI is going to be able to do that. It's, you know, we do, okay, for example, you go to YouTube. I scroll through some videos in YouTube and it's like AI, AI voice, AI voice, AI voice. Oh, that's a real person. You can hear the difference. Okay. It's emotionless. It's mechanical. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, even if it does get to a point to where it, it starts to really become hard to, to tell whether it's a real person or not, it's not you. It's not your voice. It's not you telling your story. That's why you got to narrate your own audiobook. And that's why I do what I do. That's why I love doing what I do. And what really makes me uh, so happy and proud of the authors that go through the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program is hearing their narration. If you go to my website, uh, there's clips. I have clips of um, uh, a few of the authors that have gone through the program. And uh, I had a guy, a professional radio guy, listen to it and go, hey, you know, are those professional narrators? And I'm like, no, <laughs> those are the authors. Those are the authors telling their story. And, you know, you can do it and you can get that emotion across and you will sound professional. And as your coach, I will make sure that you are sounding professional. Of course, that's my job as your coach. And again, when you do your audiobook, you don't have to worry about anything except doing a great narration when you're in the program. I provide you the equipment that you need to set up your recording space. I do all the audio editing for you. Uh, I have 20 plus years as an audio editor. So uh, you got that, you know, on your side. And I do the uploading for publication for you. It's all done for you. All you have to do is do a great narration. If you're interested in the program, book a call with me. Uh, we're going to put up the graphic real quick here. Uh, and uh, just book a call with me. All right. That's all you need to do. I like to talk to you first before I enroll you. And that's just the way I work. Again, uh, for those of you who aren't seeing the video part of it and are just getting the audio version of this podcast, it's bit.ly at or, or bit.ly uh, audio book onboarding. So it's bit.ly forward slash audio book onboarding. All right. So uh, I do want to share with you something else that I wanted to talk about in regards to the mindset aspect. And I know, you know, it's, it's just really important. And, you know, I know that some people are like, well, I, you know, all, all I care about is the practical aspect. And that's great. Like I said, there's a lot of tools out there for you that will help you uh, write better and be a, a more prolific author. But if you're not in the right frame of mind, it's tough to really get across what you want to get across emotionally. You've got to be in the right frame of mind. And there's, there's some things I want to just talk about in regards to self-esteem and self-worth and confidence, okay? Because these are things that definitely come into play. As an author, as writing your book, you know, you hit a brick wall, you, you, you're, you're in writer's block. And, and I hear this a lot too, and that's imposter syndrome. I can't do this, I'm not a good writer. I show, what, why would I even think I can do this? 
imposter syndrome. That's not true. You can do this. That's a false belief. That's a false belief that you need to get rid of. You need to crush that false belief and need to put a positive belief in there to replace that false belief. Okay. So what is self-worth? Self-worth basically is uh, the opinion and value you place upon yourself. Okay. It's the opinion and the value that you place upon yourself, your self-worth. It can be positive or it can be negative. Again, your belief system, if you have a positive belief system or a negative belief system, that belief system uh, is what's driving your subconscious, right? Your, your habits and your beliefs are what drive your subconscious. If you keep putting negativity into your beliefs, that I'm not a great writer, I can't narrate my own audiobook, then you are ingraining this false belief in your subconscious and your subconscious is just gonna say, okay, great, yeah, you know, you suck at writing. Your voice is horrible. You don't want that. You got to put positive beliefs, positive habits, positive affirmations to ingrain that into your subconscious. I can narrate my own audiobook. I love my voice. I have a great voice. I am an awesome writer. I have something valuable to share. I can write a great book. I can narrate a great book. My book is great. There you go. Positive affirmations, that's what you need to boost that self-worth. Now, self-esteem. Self-esteem is another thing, right? Lack of confidence and self-esteem. We hear this all the time. Self-esteem basically is how you think and feel uh, about yourself. And this is all um, based on internal and external influences, okay? Who cares what other people think? Getting back to that again, that's an external influence. Are you allowing those external influences uh, mold you in a way that is not conducive to uh, positivity, that is putting something negative into your subconscious, that it is not helping you with uh, your author business, your author brand, okay? So uh, you have to raise that self-esteem. You gotta believe in yourself. Again, it's belief, it's your belief system, all right? It's your belief system. Now here's some food for thought, right? Beliefs aren't real, but they're real to you. And what that means is what you believe is what your subconscious believes, and that's what you believe, okay? Not everybody's belief systems are the same, so that's just something to, to keep in mind. So, for example, I believe in ghosts, and maybe your friend is like, I don't believe in ghosts. Well, you believe in ghosts, and that's your belief system, and that's what's real to you. Your friend is, I don't believe in ghosts, but that's their belief system, and that's what's real to them, okay? But again, you can... Uh, change your belief system and change your habits so that you are putting more positivity into what you do. And again, this really applies to you as a nonfiction author, and especially when you're narrating your own audiobook. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in your voice. You have to love your voice. You have to love this this beautiful thing that you have right here in your throat, and this this head, which is a resonator for your voice, which is what makes you so unique which is another reason why you narrate your own audiobook because that's that uniqueness, right? Nobody sounds like you, nobody talks like you, no one expresses themselves the way you do. Only you can do that. That's why you narrate your own audiobook, okay? The other thing that I wanted to talk about again is confidence. Okay, confidence. What is confidence? Confidence is trusting and believing that you are capable uh, to accomplish any task. You are capable to accomplish anything that you put your mind to. You're trusting in yourself and you're believing in yourself. Again, it all ties into your belief system. You're trusting and believing in yourself and you have the confidence that you can do it. It's like the uh, uh, double bag, brown paper bag, gym bag story that I, <laughs> I said at the beginning of the podcast, right? It's, it's trusting and believing in yourself that, and having the confidence. I'm confident that I can walk across the Fox studio lot from one end of the lot to the other with my double bag, brown paper bag, and feel confident because I believe in myself. And again, who cares what other people think? Not vindictive, not mean, just stating fact. Who cares what other people think? And remember that catchphrase, I am who I am, I do what I do, and I am not ashamed of it. You're an author. You are who you are. You do what you do, and you're not ashamed of it because you believe in yourself. You got to believe in yourself and your voice as well. You do have what it takes to do an awesome narration. You gotta believe it. And you gotta love that voice. 
Don't let uh, lack of confidence stop you. Don't let lack of confidence be the barrier that is stopping you from moving your business forward or doing the things that you want to do, but then you, you kind of shy away from it. In the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program that I teach, uh, we do spend time talking about confidence. We talk about mindset. We talk about being in the right frame of mind. We talk about the intangibles that create an awesome audiobook. All these things are so important. They are all interweaved into the practical aspects of doing a great narration. So you can do it. You just got to believe in yourself. Okay. You just have to believe in yourself because you do have what it takes. Now, again, I do want to uh, let you know that I do have a freebie. All right. I do have a freebie for you. Uh, and we're going to put that graphic up on the screen. You can see it there. Uh, this is for my audiobook narration reference guide, which has some great tools and techniques in there. Uh, I will spell this out for our uh, uh, non-video <laughs> listeners of the podcast, which is, again, another bit.ly link. It's bit.ly forward slash narration reference guide. That's it. So just go to there and you can go to my website too. You can go to robertlanecoaching.com. It's right there on the homepage. You'll see uh, the you know, audiobook narration guide, you know, you know, click here, you click it and you grab it and it's yours for free. And uh, I'm really happy to, to share that with you because I do talk about not just only the um, practical aspects of how to do a great audiobook narration, but the... Um, intangibles, right? The emotion and the feeling behind it and what and things that you can do to bring that forward when you narrate your own audiobook. And again, you can have an audiobook that's here, which is mediocre, or man, you can raise the bar, right? Have a great audiobook that really keeps that listener engaged. And how you do that is bringing in those intangibles. You tap into the core reason of why you wrote your book the emotion, everything that uh, brings it forward. Remember those intangibles are what makes your book from mediocre to great. And those are things that you incorporate. And I teach you how to do those things and how to do a great narration in the uh, audiobook coaching program, by the way. All right. So just again, remember that your, your self-worth and your uh, self-esteem and your confidence, these are all beliefs and then they should be part of your belief system that is positive. Okay. Always positive. If you have a negative uh, belief system, <laughs> or if there, I should say a negative belief that's part of your belief system, purge it, get rid of it, crush it, replace it with positivity, okay? That's what's gonna make you a better author, and that's what's gonna give you the confidence to do an awesome audiobook narration. Uh, we're gonna take one more quick break. I do wanna talk a little bit more in detail about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program, uh, and I wanna share that with you. Uh, and uh, again, if you have any questions, or please feel free to comment. Uh, if you're an author, I'd love to hear about your book as well. Uh, you can always reach out to me at robert at robertlanecoaching.com as well. All right, we will be back. This is Your Book, Your Voice. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. 
Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And welcome back to Your Book, Your Voice. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Uh, again, shout out to those of you who are watching the stream live as it happens. Appreciate you uh, tuning in. Do appreciate that as well. And uh, I do want to talk to you about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. Uh, as an audiobook coach and producer, uh, I saw that there was a need for this. Uh, after I published my book, um, I had other authors uh, coming to me and saying, hey, you know, I want to do an audio book. How did you do that? And I already had Robert Lane Coaching, so I expanded what I do with my business and created the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. And I wanted to make this as simple and easy and hassle-free uh, for you as the author because creating an audiobook, there are a lot of moving parts. Okay, and if you try to do this on their own, on your own, you can be overwhelmed and uh, it can be confusing. And uh, I've had some authors say, you know, I was I was going to do an audiobook and I was checking it out and trying to do it, and uh, man, it's uh, I just I just didn't do it because I couldn't figure out how to do it right. So that's why I created the program. So I wanted to remove the hassle so that, again, all you really need to worry about is just doing a great audiobook narration. So there's, there's basically three phases to the program. The first is setup and preparation. Now, you're narrating your, narrating your own audiobook, which means that uh, you need to have a studio. Well, problem solved. I send you the recording equipment. A professional microphone, professional headsets, a sound isolation screen for the mic, pop filter. Uh, we go over the recording uh, program software for, that you're going to be recording your audiobook on. Everything is provided for you. Now, the equipment that I send to you is yours to keep. You don't send it back to me. It's part of the program. It's yours to keep. So if you decide to do your own podcast or maybe you're going to do your, another audiobook, you have everything there. And it's yours to keep. Okay. The second uh, phase of the program is the art of audiobook narration. How to do a great narration, how to be compelling and engaging and conversational and authentic, bringing those intangibles into your narration, the practical aspects of doing an audiobook narration, all those tools and techniques. And again, as your coach, I'm with you every step of the way. Okay. I'm there to help you to make sure you do a great narration. You send me a test file and I listen to it and I listen to everything. I listen to the silence. I listen to what's happening between words, between sentences. I'm listening to the ambient sound and just making sure that you're sounding great and that there isn't anything in that recording that shouldn't be there. If it sounds great, you get the green light to start your audiobook process. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the audiobook process, your book is divided up into sections. So every section of your book is a separate audio file. So for example, in my book, I have uh, 14 chapters. Well, that's 14 audio files right there. Then there's opening credits, closing credits, an introduction, maybe you have a foreword, a dedication page, acknowledgments, um, you know, I had freebies and bonuses in my book, uh, so that was a separate audio track as well. Um, so you may have 20, 30, or even more audio files that you would record. And it's actually not that bad to do it that way because you're dividing it up into sections. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to do the recording. When you're done recording, you send the files to me as your audio editor. I'm your coach and your editor, so you don't have to find a studio, you don't have to find an editor, you don't have to do any of that because I provide that for you. And I edit your audio files to make sure they sound fantastic, and they will. Uh, and then the final phase is getting your audio files uploaded for publication into Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books, the AAA. You gotta be on those uh, three distribution platforms because those are the most popular ones. That's where people go to. Yes, there are other distribution platforms to be on. And if that works for you as the author, as your brand, 
right? If it being on more distribution platforms is what you need to move your business forward, then great. Uh, you have that option to do that. But my focus is getting you on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books for sure, okay? That's what I do. And then I also share with you some marketing tools and techniques that you can do to help promote your book, to create a great uh, audiobook launch. Uh, and again, if it's something that you've written recently, or maybe you have a book that you wrote you know, a few years ago, turn that book into an audiobook that you narrate, you know? Resurrect that book, bring it back to life. It's a great way to relaunch your book again. And remember, you're hitting a global audience and you're hitting people that look for audiobooks first, okay? That's why it's really important to have an audiobook and especially for you as a nonfiction author to narrate your own book so that you can get it out, to, out there to those people who uh, just wanna listen to audiobooks. The other great thing about having an audiobook in addition to your ebook and paperback and hardcover is that it will also boost sales for your a digital version and your uh, hardcover and paperback versions of your book. And you can do specials and offers and combine things. And there's a lot of great things that you can do from a marketing standpoint when you do have an audiobook. But remember, the most important thing is this it's your book, it's your voice which is why I call it your book, your voice, but it's true. It's your book, it's your voice, and only you can speak your story the way you intend it to, to be heard, to be told. Only you can do it that way. Only you can do it, okay? As I mentioned earlier, and I know I, I, it's, I hit this uh, home many times, but it's just it's so important that AI and another narrator are not gonna interpret your book your way. So it's really important. All right, so the... Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program is a six-week program. We get you recorded, edited, and published by the end of the six weeks. Six weeks, not six months, not three months. And again, it's uh, taking all that confusion and hassle away from creating the audiobook. That's my job. My job is to do the heavy lifting, to be your coach, to help you through the process, to build your confidence, to make sure you're doing a great narration, and then doing all the technical work that needs to be done. It's all part of the program. So if you're interested at all, just schedule a call, all right? Uh, talk to me about it, and uh, we're going to put the graphic up one more time so that you can uh, see the link, and just book a call with me. That's the first step. And the reason why I do this is I wanna talk with you first because we are developing a business relationship because you and I are gonna work for you know the next six weeks when you enroll. And uh, you know I wanna make sure that we are on the same page, that what I do to service you is what you need. And uh, remember, I'm there for you every step of the way. Uh, so again, for our friends who are only listening uh, to the podcast and not being able to see it, the link is bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding, which is bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. All right. So um, with that, book your call, get your audiobook done, get it launched. It's an awesome thing. Okay. My last assignment to you, and I always sign off this way, is when you're out there in the world, say hello to a stranger, smile at them, maybe give them a compliment, because that small gesture of kindness can really make somebody's day because you don't know what somebody's going through. And we all put up this facade of we're fine, but maybe inside we're hurting. And maybe a nice gesture from a stranger will really make their day. So go out there, be beautiful human beings. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning into the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching. Uh, whoops, no, the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. Everything is Your Book, Your Voice. The audiobook coaching program is called Your Book, Your Voice. The podcast is called Your Book, Your Voice. But that's okay because now you know it's the same across the board. If you want more information as well, you can always go to the website at robertlanecoaching.com. All right. So until next week, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Robert A. Lane. This is Your Book, Your Voice. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Have an awesome week, and I'll talk to you soon. This has been Your Book, Your Voice with host Robert A. Lane. Tune in each week for another powerful and informative episode of Your Book, Your Voice, Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.